we can use Kirchhoff's circuit rules to help us understand how capacitors behave when they're combined with each other, for instance in series and in parallel. Let's look at parallel first. When capacitors are in parallel by Kirchhoff's voltage rule, both of them are at the same voltage. Since they're capacitors, that means that each one holds a charge that's proportional to the voltage across it, and it's also proportional to its capacitance. So the total charge held on the plates of both capacitors, the total charge that goes into this series, is the sum of these two by Kirchhoff's current rule. Charge on the capacitors is the accumulation of the current that goes through them. And the total charge on this group of capacitors is Q1 plus Q2. So we can add those together. C1V plus C2V is the total charge. If you want to think of this as being a single capacitor with some equivalent capacitance C, we can find out what that is. Well, C is Q over V, the charge divided by the voltage. Charge is C1V plus C2V. You divide that by the voltage, and you get that the capacitance is C1 plus C2. In other words, when capacitors are in parallel, their capacitances add. The total capacitance is just the sum of the individual capacitances when the capacitors are in parallel. What about series? From Kirchhoff's voltage law, we understand that the voltage around the loop adds to zero, so the voltage drop across capacitor 1 and the voltage drop across capacitor 2 have to add up to the total voltage drop across both of them together. By Kirchhoff's current law, we understand that both capacitors have to hold the same charge, because whatever current goes into one capacitor and accumulates a charge has to also go into and out of the other capacitor. So the charges are the same. The voltages add to the total series voltage by the capacitor relation that the voltage is the charge divided by the capacitance. We have these expressions for the individual capacitances, Q over C1 for the voltage across capacitor 1, Q over C2 for the voltage across capacitor 2, and they're the same Q. If we want to think of this series of two capacitors as a single capacitor with some equivalent capacitance C, then the voltage across that equivalent capacitor will be Q, the total charge, divided by C, the equivalent capacitance. Well, if we just take this expression, Q over C1 plus Q over C2 equals Q over C, and divide by Q, the reciprocal of the equivalent capacitance, is the sum of the reciprocals of the individual capacitances. So when capacitors are in series, the reciprocals of their capacitances add to give the reciprocal of the equivalent capacitance. Now we can compare and contrast how capacitors and resistors behave in circuits when they're in series and in parallel. These properties come from the same Kirchhoff's rules. We have differences in how they behave because of differences in the way capacitance and resistance relate to voltage. So when capacitors are in series, the reciprocals of their capacitances add to give the reciprocal of the equivalent capacitance. With resistors, the individual resistances add to give the total resistance. In parallel, for capacitors, it's the capacitance of the individual resistors that add up to give the capacitance of the group in parallel. For resistors, it's the reciprocals of the individual resistances add together to give the reciprocal of the total equivalent resistance.